Hello, welcome back to my channel Christian Faith and Fiction. My name's Lou and I hope you had a really great Christmas and are looking forward to New Year. I want to share with you some of the books that I've been reading recently. I've got some Christian fiction book reviews to share with you, some fantastic books that I've read and also some other recent reads and I'll just kind of give you an overview of those ones and their ratings. Let's see how I got on. It's the 3rd of December and I kicked off the month with a finishing a fantastic book. This is Baby It's Cold Outside by Susan May Warren. This is set in 1949 Christmas and follows um, a lady called Dottie who has lost her son in the war and is going to be spending Christmas alone and that's kind of how she likes it. She's cut herself off from other people but um, she ends up uh, in the snowstorm being joined by uh, four other people. Um, one of her neighbours who she has past history with but she hasn't spoken to for ages and then a younger couple a younger well a couple of younger people um one who is violet who was in the war as a mechanic and now feels like she's out of place trying to be a proper a proper lady back home and then jake who um has carrying some secrets around with him and ends up getting trapped there as well and then another child as well it was a fantastic book this um was really heartwarming it's quite character driven in that the characters are all carrying stuff from the past and their own insecurities and things and then they get trapped in a house together and have to face up to things um, there's quite a lot going in, on in the plot as well alongside that and that made it really um, feel well paced uh, I really liked the way the plot developed I never felt bored I always felt engaged I loved all the characters I loved how they came to um, deal with stuff and interact with each other and how it being with each other affected them. Um, it has a really strong faith element to it but it always felt natural to the characters. Um, yeah this is going to go down um, on my favourites for Christmas books list and I would love to read it, read it another year at some point. Um, this is an, a slightly older book this is the updated cover, so you may find it with a different cover um, out and about in the world. Um, but yeah, I I definitely loved this book and I'll give it 10 out of 10. It's the 13th of December and yesterday I finished reading Wolf Soldier by James R. Hannibal. This is, I think, aimed at teenagers. It's a fantasy, Christian fantasy book and... Um, it's set in a completely different world to ours. The story follows Connor who gets an invitation to be to join the Light Raider Academy um, and his parents are not keen on him joining up. The world itself reminds me a bit of the Tolkien world in that there's like goblins and orcs and dragons and things like that uh, but it's in some ways it's very different um, from that kind of world, Middle Earth, but it is, I would say, kind of medieval type fantasy. It's definitely a Christian fantasy. It has a lot of biblical uh, imagery, parallels, and also quotes from the Bible. The world building is very rich. So on the one hand, you get a lot of like sense of the world and the history and things, but it um at times I did or a number of times I did get quite confused with it because there's so much uh well building information that's given to you so I gave this four stars on Goodreads um eight out of ten it's the 15th of December I've finished A Christmas in the Alps by Melody Carlson this is one of her Christmas novellas that she brings out every year this I think was one of my um more favourite ones that I've read of hers, this one's, this one and A Christmas at Winter Hill. This follows Simone who get, finds a letter from her great-grandmother saying that there is a treasure for her in France um, where her great-grandmother came from 
and she has to fly over to France to try and find out what that is. Unfortunately, she is afraid of flying and has all sorts of problems getting there. And on the way, she meets somebody else called Kyle. And that's how the story starts. Um, I thought this was a great romance. It did have quite a good plot to it. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, the only thing I wasn't so keen on is I would like to have seen a longer ending. But overall, I thought it was a sweet, light heart light romance and I give it 9 out of 10. It's the 19th of December. I finished a few different books I've been listening to over the last week and then quite a few yesterday. Um, I finished Hercule Poirot's Christmas by Agatha Christie. This is um, like a family that don't get on with each other that all have to spend time with each other over Christmas and then somebody dies. Um, and Hercule Poirot was called in to help out. Um, I This is a reread for me. I um, enjoyed following along with it. Again, I remembered who did it, so I, that wasn't a surprise to me. But if I hadn't have read it before, I don't think I would have guessed it. Um, the only thing I didn't like about it so much was it didn't feel very Christmassy to me. So even though it's in the title, uh, it didn't give me the, feel, the feels for that one. Uh, so I gave that one 9 out of 10 and then I went on to listen to a short story by Agatha Christie which is called The Adventure of the Christmas Pudding which is another Hercule Poirot mystery. It's just quite short and it's set at Christmas and very much more Christmassy themed and more a lighter type of um, story so I enjoyed that one a lot more and gave that one 10 out of 10. That's another reread for me. And then I have been listening to a couple of uh, children's storybooks, short ones. Uh, so I listened to Peter and the Wolf by Prokofiev. It was read by Sophia Loren and it is the music from uh, Prokofiev. Am I pronouncing it? Prokofiev. Um, and she is reading the story alongside that. So I enjoyed that one. I gave that one 10 out of 10. On there. And then I listened to The Velveteen Rabbit by Marjorie Williams Bianco, and that's another really short audio book uh, read by, I think, Richard Armitage. And uh, yeah, I think it's quite a famous book, but yeah, it was okay. Um, I gave it 7 out of 10. It's the 23rd of December, and I am continuing with my. A uh, spell of wanting to read kids books. My my pain levels have been a bit higher recently, so that puts me wanting to have something to read that's not too engaging for my brain. And also, I'm enjoying ticking off lots of short books. Um, but I've read uh, *The Night Before Christmas* by Clement C. Moore. This is illustrated by Charles Santore, and I liked the in some of the inside kind of vintage style illustrations um, and it's a classic poem isn't it but uh, honestly I think the Santa Claus on this is really quite scary like does anyone else think this looks like a drunken guy kind of leering at me, winking at children like something kind of disturbing about that that picture so I, I might don't donate this one to charity but yeah it was it was quite a nice uh, poem to read, but I gave that one 6 out of 10 purely because of the scary Santa. Um, and then I finished uh, listening to The Owl and the Pussycat and Other Nonsense Rhymes by Edward Lear, which I think was a free one on Audible Plus catalogue. Um, some of these I remember from childhood, obviously The Owl and the Pussycat and The Jumblies, something like that. They went to see in a sieve, that one. Um, so I, that was quite nostalgic for me. Uh, but um, yeah, some of them were funny, really funny. Um, but others just, I, I don't know how they got published, quite frankly. Maybe it's they've just dated. Uh, but the rhyming doesn't work or the, the phrasing doesn't quite work. Yeah, it yeah, wasn't to my taste, shall we say. So I gave that one six out of ten as well. 
And then I've just I finished uh, listening to A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. I listened to the audiobook and kind of kind of followed along in this uh, edition. I really like this cover edition, and I like that it has the old. Um, illustrations in it from I guess from the original I'm not sure um, so that's a really nice little book uh, the story wise it's really a classic isn't it uh, I found it comical and creepy as well the version I was listening to was read by Hugh Grant I think the only thing I um, don't like about it is that uh, Scrooge is kind of saved he gets his salvation through a change, a change of heart and good works and charity, which seems a very, maybe it's a very Victorian view of Christianity, but there's no mention of Jesus. There's no mention of saved by grace or faith or Jesus' death and resurrection. There's not even any mention of the Christmas nativity story or anything. So I feel like it might give people the wrong impression about how you get saved or how you get eternal life. Um, yeah, you definitely could come away with it thinking that you, you just get it if you do good works and do charity. So I gave that one 9 out of 10. So it's the 29th of December now as I'm wrapping up. I uh, just have a few more books to add in and show you. Um, one I thought I'd show you is a colouring book. It's called Good Tidings at Christmas, an inspirational colouring book for stress relief and creativity. And this is by Zondervan. And it's um, it's got some of it's got like quotes from authors and things written with it. Um, I'll show you the one that I coloured in that has a quote. It's really big. <laughs> that has a quote from um, Charles Dickens on it, but it also has stories from the uh, the nativity. Stories. So if you see that, that's got a verse from Isaiah added onto it. So that was really, um, yeah, it's, it's quite a nice book to colour in over Christmas. I think it's going to last me quite a few years because I, it takes me about a month um, or several weeks to, um, to colour in one picture. Uh, but yeah, that was, that's that one. And then I listened to The Castle of Adventure by Enid Blyton. Um, was an audio book. I, these are ones that I have read some of them as a child but this one I hadn't read. Um, I enjoyed it. I gave it 9 out of 10 stars. Then I listened to The Nutcracker and the Mouse King by E.T.A. Hoffman which is dramatised by Brian Sibley and this was originally a radio drama on the BBC. Um, quite weird. <laughs> I thought it was quite weird and quite different from the ballet so it's not quite what I was expecting so I gave it on 6 out of 10. And then I finished uh, Once Upon a Christmas by Andrea Boyd, Mikhail Dawn, Tony Shiloh, Angela Ruth Strong and JC Weaver and this is a collection of Christmas novellas. This is Christian um, fiction, it's contemporary romance and it is retellings of different fairy tales. So it the first one was Sleeping Beauty, and then Mulan, then Snow White, then uh, Cinderella, and then The Little Mermaid. And I enjoyed all of them. I thought they were good. They had some good spiritual content to them. Um, some of them I liked more than others. So on average, I gave it 8 out of 10. I really enjoyed another collection, which was similar to this, by the same sort of authors called Once Upon a Summer earlier in the year that one I gave 10 out of 10, this one not quite as much but I still really thought it was worthwhile reading and I enjoyed the um, the stories. I like reading novellas and they do add up together. I think in total it was like 450 pages, 435 pages long um, but that was five stories in that and it was pretty cheap to buy so um, I really, I thought that was a good story. And then finally, the non-fiction book that I've been reading is Because of Bethlehem by Max Lucado. And his books um, seem to be, all of them have, the first two thirds of the book is his um, reflections and 
his writing chapters and then the last third is a bible study i haven't done the bible study maybe i'll do that next year but i enjoyed reading through his t um, chapters on different elements of christmas and i got some new things out of the christmas story that i hadn't thought of before which is always good um, and it was good to reflect on the christmas story and christmas traditions from a christian perspective so yeah i enjoyed that one i gave that one nine out of ten so those are all the books that i've read recently um i think my probably my favorite one would have been baby it's cold outside by susie susan may warren and um, that was definitely one that i would pick up again let me know down in the comments which was your favourite book that you've read in the last month. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed and um, welcome to everyone who's uh, become a new subscriber. I really appreciate your support and I really love to hear from you down in the comments. So let's have a chat. I've got some more videos hopefully coming up soon. Uh, January new releases and my wrap up of the year videos. So stay tuned for those. And until next time, have a great reading week and I'll see you again. God bless. Bye.